There is a very, very interesting game on absolutely incredible defense based on a counterplay. Uh, was played between two famous grandmaster Yuri Averbach and Boris Spassky. So there was King's Indian defense, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. So um, e4, ca uh, d6, bishop e2, castle, and bishop g5. This is so-called Averbach variation was, that was played by order of the variation. Averbach c5, d5, queen a5. Now, nowadays it's known that it's not the best way to play for uh, black. So nevertheless, queen a5 was played, bishop d2, a6, a4, e5, g4. This position is already bad for black. And just to explain it to you, why is this position bad? Because white has more space advantage, but space advantage white always has in King's Indian. Black does not have any play on a queen side. As a matter of fact, eventually queen is going to have to leave, and white may have potential uh, play on a queen side. And definitely black does not have much chances on the king side. And if they try something like knight e8, followed by f5, that may be also very dangerous because king side opens and white is better prepared uh, on that side of the board. Knight e8, h4, and black did play f5. White played h5, black played f4, and white played in this position g5. Now this is a very interesting move after queen d8 and bishop g4. You see that white is exchanging um, after bishop g4 ex exchanging light square bishops and you see that black's light square bishop is better than white's. So all black pawns are on dark squares and that's not a very good position for black. So after bishop g4, knight c7, bishop takes c8, queen takes c8, knight f3. Now this position is very very bad for black. The reason why this position is bad because you see there is only one square, one minor, uh, one bishop on the board for each side and black star, dark square bishop is totally blocked by their pawns, the pawn structure, f4, e5, d6, e5, makes the g7 bishop very bad and white has very good potential to start play on a queen side. So black is in some kind of trouble. Now, on a high level, when you have game between two grandmasters, you can see, they, they feel, they see these things and they see the danger of the position. Danger of, there is no immediate danger for black, but there is clearly, you can see it, it's very clear that black has no counterplay. And that's what makes next move absolutely amazing. If you put this move in any computer program, I'm sure you're gonna get two question marks next to it. But humans, that's why we have better intuition and better different criteria for uh, determining good or bad moves. Anyway, the move is knight c6. 
D takes C and B takes C. Well, why took this knight for two different reasons? One, they don't want black knight to go to D4. And the second piece is a piece. So they took on C6, pawn takes on C6. And now let's talk about this position. White has an extra piece, but there are too many pawns on the board. There are no open files and no area on the board where white can create some play and win with an extra piece in the game. Position is closed. Black is getting potential knight e6 and knight d4 to put knight nicely. Also, they got open B file so they have some play and it's very difficult for a white to open position if position was open for example if we took these two pawns of the board and then this piece is going to come into the game and I'm sure on C and D files white can double or triple eventually uh, uh, an extra piece is going to win quickly but that's not the position here so white goes knight h4, attacking g6 pawn, queen e8, white takes on g6, black takes, white plays queen g4, white brings pieces close on the king side, but there is no, no threat they can create in very near future. Rook b8, knight to d1, knight to e6. You see now knight is coming to d4. Black has p one less piece, but they the pieces they have they're very active. Rook is very active. Knight is very active. Now, this sacrifice that Black performed is not an aggressive way to play. Not at all. It's a defensive. Defensive. Sometimes the counter. Actually, a lot of times. Maybe most of the time, the counter attack is the best defense. Now they created some play rather than suffocate. And this is very, very instructive. Uh, after knight e6, white played rook a3. They want to transfer rook to king side. Knight d4, rook to h3. Queen f7, bishop to c3. Obviously, they want to eliminate somehow this knight on d4. Rook f to e8. Now there goes um, uh, some maneuvering. You see that after rook f to e8, black may want to try queen take c4. They didn't want to take on c4 in this position because knight would take on g6. Black played rook f to e8. And that was played in case white wants to take on d4. Then black will take with e pawn, extending the activity of the dark square bishop, and also putting rook on e file. So in this position, white played queen g2. And this is uh, kind of hard, hard to explain move. No, actually they played rook to h2, rook 3 to h2. This is also a very hard to explain move. And black played queen takes c4. And after knight takes to g6, black played rook e6. And all of a sudden white has some concrete problems to solve. Uh, on move like knight h4, Black may go f3, create very unpleasant threat, queen e2 mate. And it's very hard for white to meet this threat. So all of a sudden, white is on defensive. After rook e3, bishop takes d4. And here, black plays rook takes g6. Queen f5 and queen to e6. That's another wonderful assessment of the position. The position is amazing. Queen e6, queen takes e6, rook takes e6, 
Now bishop moves back to c3. Now what happened? Black does not have any threats. White has an extra piece. Queens are off the board. But d5 gives black very dangerous pawn center. And after f3, rook to b3. You see, black continues with their initiative while white's pieces are totally discoordinated. After rook to b3, rook to h3 c4 now what black wants to do go d4 c5 and rook to b6 white is not very happy anymore because they have an extra piece but there is absolutely no coordination between bishop on c3 rook on h1 rook on h3 that's totally cut off and after c4 king d2 was played Rook to g6. Now black wants to pick up the pawn on g5, which is very important pawn since black is going to have an opportunity to bring the rook into the game. And after rook, um, rook to g6, rook to g1, d4, bishop to a5, bishop to f8, Rook to g4, rook to d6, king c2, and rook to d7. Now we see that white, black wants to play rook d to b7 and put more pressure on b pawn. Rook to d7, g6, rook to b7, as we mentioned. And after bishop to e1, c5. You see those pawns keep moving. Rook g to h4. That threat of rook h8 check can easily be stopped by bishop g7. And now bishop a5 and c3. There, there is the black's strong pawn center in action. Pawn takes on c3 and rook a3. Remember, black cannot survive since they sacrifice the piece, extra piece, unless they are extremely active and they have to keep the counterplay going, creating uh, very strong uh, threats. After rook a3, c takes d, e takes d, extending the, the function of the bishop on g7 and wanting to go c4 next move rook takes f4 rook a2 check king d3 rook b1 white has to go rook h1 and rook takes a4 now the bishop is hanging on a5 and c4 check is threatening king c2 rook b5 e5. Now this is interesting now. Now white, black is giving up the, uh, white is giving up the bishop in order to go e6, trying to go e7 and create deadly threat on their own. After e5, which is an interesting move, black played d3 check. King takes d3 and rook takes f4. And you see how drastically the picture changed. All of a sudden, black is the one with material advantage. And white is the one that on defensive. Bishop c3, rook takes f3. Black is winning now. And now we will see how white. It's a, now it's brilliant defense using the same principles that black used when they sacrificed the piece. White creates very strong counterplay in the end game, being a lot of material down. King to e4, rook to g3, king to f4, 
Rook takes g6 and knight to e3. Now black has rook and a pawn for knight, but they have very active pieces. Objectively, black is winning. Practically, is not that simple. So, um, so white played knight to e3. Black played ro uh, bishop h8. Well, uh, no, actually black played rook b8 here. And white plays knight f5. Creating primitive threat knight e7 check. Rook f8. Rook h5. Rook e8. King to e4, getting off the pin. Rook g1. Rook h3. Bishop f8. King d5. It's amazing how active all of a sudden white is. They want to go e6 and create a mating threat even on h8. So black has to be careful here. Rook d1 check. King to e4. Rook c1. King to d5. It's easy to criticize black in this position, what they should have done, but it's not easy to win because those pawns on c5 and a6 are very easy to, very difficult to move them while white has a strong threat of going e6. Rook d1 check king e4. Now rook d7. Here white decided to play knight h6. Obviously if black wants to win they must take on h6 because king h7 was ju will just repeat position. So they play bishop takes h6, rook takes h6. Again now white wants to move the king forward and also white is threatening e6 move with idea of mating. Uh, rook h7, rook g6 check. King f7, rook f6 check. King e7 and rook c6. Now black has serious problem winning because if white takes the c5 pawn, it's not easy how they can make much progress black. So after rook c6, king d7 and rook takes c5. Rook h6. Now it's already very difficult to win. King d5. White is continuing with their activity. Rook to b6. Bishop to a5. Now this is one of the best defensive maneuvers I've seen in the end game. And Averbach been known, uh, Averbach playing White been known as one of the best end game specialists. And he plays Bishop a5. Theoretically, if you take 90%, or maybe 95% of positions where rook and pawn versus bishop and pawn, rook and pawn wins. And after bishop a5, black plays rook b5, and now position looks like totally lost for white. But that's the brilliancy of defensing maneuver. Here, shocking continuation for white. White plays rook takes b5, a takes b, king to c5 is not good because of rook b8, so white plays e6 check. It looks like totally suicidal. Rook takes e6, obvious answer by black and king c5. Now we know if white wins this pawn, position is draw, so black must give check and now king b6. Amazingly they have they agreed to a draw which may seem like totally ridiculous decision made by uh, the black but this position is a total draw, totally drawn. The reason why position is drawn, 
because white is going to go bishop b4, bishop c5, and king takes b5. But this, you may say, this is three moves. Yes, this is three moves, but there is nothing white can do to stop it. Actually, a rook d5, white can go bishop b4 and bishop a5 too, back and forth. There is no way black can make progress. If they go king e6, I can go bishop c5 and next move pick up this pawn. There is nothing can be done by black. So white goes bishop b4 and bishop c5. Dead drawn position. Extremely interesting game. Of course, not without the mistakes, but you see how far can defense do. There was a brilliant defense based on peace activity, sacrificing peace, where it is very difficult to point what is the compensation. And uh, black got tremendous compensation. And then extremely powerful defensive maneuver by white sacrificing no well not sacrif sacrificing the last pawn they have and exchanging rooks everything that contradicts main principles of the end game very powerful example and a lot to learn from this is grandmaster damien lemos here for online chess lessons.net first of all i hope you enjoyed um, this video if you would like to receive more free chess videos from us, you can just click the subscribe button below. I would also highly recommend signing up for my free mail course, The 10 Grandmaster Secrets to Dominate Chess. During this exclusive course from OnlineChessLessons.net, I'll share with you my own Grandmaster shortcuts to effective attacking, defending and growth hacks to improving your chess without um, complicated books or memorization. So sign up by clicking the sidebar on the right and I know you won't be disappointed. Once more this is Damien uh, for OnlineChessLessons.net and I'll see you um, in my videos. Thank you.